Well, hi there, and welcome to Friday Night Lights. This week, special guest, Juki's joined the panel alongside uh, myself and Johnny. How are you, Juki? Excited? I'm... I have a touch of trepidation, but an excited trepidation, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Well, you know, because you're here, we happen to have a passion race as well this Friday, so we probably should start with that in the Carlingford Stakes at 8.30. Yes, very interesting heat, isn't it? The, the global giant sets the standard, but proved vulnerable to an improver in one of these the last day. Uh, the obvious improver is the Muta Beck. Yes. But he has he needs to step up a fair bit here, and I'm not sure a small field, not guaranteed pay scenario is what suits him ideally. So reluctantly, I'm going to tip up Curly. Oh yeah. Very difficult filly for a supposed paddock judge to pick up, put up because she always gets very edgy before her races. But the fact that she always does it, yeah. it's, it, it, it's just her nature or what have you. Should have the run of the race. Gets the Phillies allowance and that run behind Desire at the last day, that's real form. Yeah. And might just be good enough here. Yeah, good stuff. John, you have a thought on the pattern race? I'd actually go with Curly as well. I was a small bit disappointed with Global Giants and uh, last time I think I tipped him up and I uh, thought he'd every chance really. Um, coming over here for what is a good race, I mean, we're talking about the, uh, the, 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 the I suppose the lower grade races are getting massive injuries at the moment, but these bigger uh, feet, or the, the higher class of races, not so much, only seven go to post, but I think it will be tactical. I think Curly will be able to dictate. I was just thinking about that in this race. I mean, Gerald Moss say, when he, you know, when he won that Melbourne Cup all those years ago, do you think eight years down the line, here he would be, Friday Night Lights in Dundalk, having a double at Newcastle the other night? Like Nothing wrong with Dundalk, is there? Yeah, yeah I mean, he Are you, are you a regular go to Dundalk? I go occasionally. Mm. Um, it's, a, it's a serious viewing track. Mm. And, uh, I like the sound the horses make as they go yeah, down to the start. Yeah. It's a very rhythmical. I, I think it's, it's well underrated in terms of okay. racing. Yeah. Well, well Jeremy Moss has just done it two weeks in a row. So yeah. uh, he's yet to get the uh, seal of approval from him as well. Of course, we'll have uh, more from Mick Halford later in the show as well. By the way, he will have a good chance in the opening race of the evening with uh, Playa del Puente, who's actually in our video. Uh, he's not going to name check, but you can see him cantering around the back in the hack out there. Uh, in the 6.30, you fancy one here, Johnny? Uh, I do, and um, this will probably be a reasonable price. Confident kid, uh, Damien English, of course, featured on the first two weeks of the show. Yeah. Um, not sure if you saw Confident Kid. He's a lovely-looking Dubawi horse, and um, Stephen Mooney takes 10 off. He, he made his handicap debut in Navin uh, recently. He was a bit disappointed now. I, have to, I think they might have gone a bit quick, but um, I think he's better than that. He's run at the Curra was eye-catching the time before. Um, he's, he's had a funny career he's been in England he's been in France and he's now up in North Dublin but um, I don't think this is a particularly good race he's an excellent draw um, Stephen came in the 10 he'll be a good price yeah Stephen knows him inside out as well rides mm. him every day what about you Jiggy? No, I'll be having a wager in this race yeah tracker alert <laughs> the Arbor Field last seen well for those of us who had the misfortune to back him the last time in Leverstown last seen repeatedly getting stopped in his run but this is beautiful for him. He's a savage record off a break. He's coming off a, an 80-odd day, day break. Drawn 14, not ideal, but plenty of pace for him to run it in this race. Very likeable horse. You now, he's a bit tricky. He has to be ridden yeah. for luck. Yeah, yeah. but he's, he's, he gives, a, gives his all. He gives his all, and I feel like he's waited to win. And it, as I said, if you had the misfortune to back him in Leverstown the last day, you're doubling down tomorrow. And if you didn't have the misfortune to back and watch the video and you'll double down anyway. Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. okay that's fair enough. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the 7 o'clock. Johnny, you like one here in this uh, 7 furlong handicap? Well, is there a better informed trainer in Ireland than Gavin Cromwell? The only nope. trainer in France from Ireland to have a winner at the two days of Longchamp. Um, a filly that, I was talking to him about this the other day, um, Until she went up. unsold for buttons and initially. Um, by a stallion that wasn't overly fashionable as time went on and to win a group two and his form has just continued Fuart has been really frustrating won at Cork part of a double for the yard and I think Gunmaker who maybe a bit like Fuart isn't entirely straightforward uh, but basically he's won the last day this is his course and trip CT Keen yes that just screams um, that just jumps off the page to me um, obviously surrendering his title this year but he's had a reasonable year what a rider around Dundalk what a rider anywhere really and the key to this race is there's going to be a bit of pace because Bay of Scale, um, I tipped this the last And day. Geological up there And as well. Geological. I'm hammer it. Drawn in seven, Geological drawn in 13, Bay of Scale. Bay of Scale was very, very free. Even though it wears a hood, um, she's, she's still struggling to settle. I cannot see this but not being strongly run. And this is Gunmaker C and D. And uh, I think he's a great chance. Okay, for the same reasons I kind of fancy Fida Sep Tom for a nice quiet run last time out. Uh, Juki, you fancy one in the 7.30? Yeah, Aussie Valentine, warrior of the turf, yes. Aussie Valentine. Uh, best horse in the race, 
really straightforward horse. Um, you can can jump out and make it if there's there's no gallop. He just he just go his pace. I love the booking of this Gavin Ryan because such a straightforward horse. Why not stick a seven pound claim run? Yeah. I mean the, the horse nearly rides the jockey. Well, I mean, he's ten now. Just a just a warrior of the turf, and um, it'd be very hard to beat. Yeah, I actually have similar reasons for suggesting Catty Man, who absolutely loves the place. Four appearances, two wins, a second, and a third. You yeah, have uh, carried in that race as well, who's yeah. a very likable stable mate of Arborfield and Red Avenger, who, if he puts it in, is certainly very well handicapped, but he's a bit tricky as well. Yeah, he can be a little bit tricky. Uh, we'll move on to the lucky last. Then you fancy one in the uh, standard forty-five to sixty-five to close the card. Go on. Yeah, I'm taking a chance on one here. Broke a pondo for Johnny Levens. Um, Johnny, the winner recently, uh, and this horse has just come so far down the weights in terms of... I think earlier this year, he ran quite well in, a, in just off a much higher mark, down to 61. He's won the last day behind um, the uh, Park Row. Uh, wasn't too bad. He was over a mile and a half. He was dropped in. He missed the break. Um, even though he was 10th, I thought it was more encouraging. The draw on 12 over this course and trip is difficult because they go to the bend almost straight away. It's yeah. another thing that you don't really appreciate unless you actually go to the track, um, nor do you appreciate the, the lovely culinary delights of, and, and very reasonably priced food it is in the restaurant as well. Yes, um, I ate in the restaurant the last time I was there. You uh, usually won't pay a tenner and you get, you get well looked after. Mm. Yeah, um, but hopefully Brocco Pondo can pay for a bit of dinner here tonight because hopefully you make more than one he, he'd want he'd want to you'd want to see some money for him maybe you know yeah. for maybe from the from um his his history but i think i think his last one was better than it looked well then let's go back to part two of our piece with mick halford and we caught it with him last week at his copper beach stables i'm down here in copper beach stables with uh, michael halford michael first of all i mean we're here to chat about Dundalk. It's it's been a, a good venue for you why do you think that is yeah it's been a lucky lucky place as you say tom for us uh, we won the very first race ever ran there, and we, we thankfully trained a lot of winners there since. That's another thing about jockeys there. I mean, it's a good chance for these younger jockeys, isn't it, during the winter? I mean, the likes of Ben Cohen, he only started riding last year, and look at him now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Um, look, it works for loads of different reasons. It was a ridiculous situation when you think of it, you know, trying to run a business where you'd close it down in, in early November and not restart till the second or third week in March the following year. He couldn't run a business like that. And it meant that a lot of people had to have dual licenses, whereas now there are plenty of trainers just concentrating on the flat. We've racing all year round. Uh, between that and, and we go to Dubai quite a bit ourselves, so uh, the winter doesn't be long going around. Yeah, nice being in Dubai. Can you use Dundalk as a bit of a prep for Dubai as well, just with the time of the year? Yeah, sometimes we'd have horses there and, you know, if we want to get a run into them before we head it out, some of the handicaps are high-end handicaps towards the back end of the year there and that allow a horse, particularly with ratings in around the 100 mark or just over it, you get a run into them if you want to. But mostly we'd use it. We could work horses before race and Jim is very good like that. So we get our final touches to them up there. And just to mention, there are still a few pattern races on the programme in the build-up to when you mentioned decent prize. When we be looking to have runners in those? Yeah, they've, um, they've a list of fillies race up there. I'd say we could have our own division of it. <laughs> we have plenty of them be going there. And um, I was happy with my Steve Central the other night in the Group 3. I see there's another 10 furlong uh, listed race coming up there. So, yeah, I think that, yeah, they're always interesting. We don't have anything for the for the listed race on Friday night, now the two-year-old race. We've won it twice in the past in recent years, but don't have anything good enough this year. Good stuff. And I suppose, is that something that crossed your mind? Like, you, you've been top trainer up there a few times. Is it something that you go, oh, we'll just, we'll have a cut at this? Um, not particularly. I, I, if it doesn't suit the horses, I don't go there. It's as simple as that. We work around the horses all the time. If it suits and, and things are coming together, fine. But if it doesn't, I wouldn't go there for the sake of going there. And it, but it has been a lucky track for you. For sure. <laughs> Yeah, that was a wonderful morning spent at uh, Mick Halford's. What a spot. Anyway, let's get our best bets of the uh, weekend at Dundalk. Dookie, we'll start with you. Best bet and give us a couple more as well. Three selections. Well, you're making me feel at home, I have to say, Tom, with a traditional Trixie, but I will, I will nap the Arborfield in the 6.30. Yeah. And I will stick him in a Trixie with Ozzy Valentine in the 7.30 and Curly in the 8.30. Good stuff. Johnny? Um, I suppose briefly mention Michael Harper. He's going to have a good Dundalk. I think he's he's yeah. a nicely handicapped horse and big chance in the first. My nap is going maker in the seven o'clock. The next best is Confident Kid in the six thirty, and in the nightcap, Broke a Pondo for the third for the Trixie. And we've all seen a few uh, clips going around of a four timer and a Trixie coming in this week for a Lucky Punter. 
um, who scooped a massive, massive win. Um, I think it might have been a tipping line or something. But four horses all came in. One of them was like 50 to 1. Yeah. Well, it can be done. It probably can, won't be, but it can it be. It can be done. It can be done. Right, my best bet of the night is Playa del Puente for Mick Alfred in the first. I'm going to pop in Fida September in the 7 o'clock and Marine 1 in the 8 o'clock as well for Dennis Hogan. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll be back again next week for more Friday Night Lights.